Hello friend! In this video, I'm going to be reviewing these Faber-Castell calligraphy brush pens and how they work specifically for brush lettering. If you are into brush lettering or you just love pens, then I hope you love this review. So let's get right into it. I've gotten some questions about this pen recently and I can honestly see why. It writes really nicely and it just kind of looks intriguing. It does kind of remind me of a few other brush pens that I love like the Zig Brushable or maybe the Tombow Dual Brush Pen. It's got a nice size brush tip and I think it feels pretty crisp at first use, but I will test out wearing one down in a little bit to see if that holds up. I wanted to test this marker with a little bit of blending. I don't use a ton of blending in my lettering work, but I think it's nice to see how it works before buying a brush pen. This one does blend and it seems like it held on to that blue color for quite a while since I wasn't constantly having to pick up more color. And in case you're wondering about ruining your brush pen by doing this, with most blendable brush pens, you can just simply color off the second color. There are times when a pen will stain, especially if you're doing a ton of blending like over and over, but I haven't found that I've really ruined a brush pen by doing this, at least not one that is blendable. And this one actually does look exceptionally clean even after adding the blue to it. So now I want to get into some comparisons. The first things that I'm going to compare with this calligraphy brush pen is the Pit Artist brush pens. I have two here, the smaller size and then the big brush pen. So oddly enough, when you look at the brush tips, the calligraphy brush pen is actually longer than the big brush pen. I don't find the big brush pen to be super flexible, so I think that the skinnier and longer tip of the calligraphy brush pen might just be what makes it so flexible. But I'm going to test out these three using some basic strokes and a bit of lettering so you can see a side-by-side -side comparison. One thing that I do want to point out that's different about these brush pens is the ink. The calligraphy brush pen is water-based, while the Pit Artist brush pens are India ink. I actually have a full review on the Pit Artist brush pens, so if you're curious about blending and other details about those, I will link that video below, but for now I'm just going to focus on how they write. I would say that based on the lettering that they help to create, the big brush pen is probably my least favorite. I much prefer the look of the other two, but they do feel very different when they write since the smaller Pit Artist brush pen is very flexible. One other thing that I hear from people sometimes is that the Pit Artist brush pens fray quickly, which I do think I agree. But one thing that I've found in the past that I do enjoy is that they've had a dual tip. So what I mean by that is when you pull the tip out of the actual pen, there was a tip on the other side that you could flip over and essentially have a fresh pen. That being said, it's actually been a while since I've bought any of the Pit Artist brush pens, so I can't be sure that that didn't change in the last year or so. But if you have a newer pack and have tested that out, let me know in the comments below if they're still doing that. But because of that, I wanted to test it out to see if the calligraphy brush pen was this way. And nope, it's just a more blunt tip on the other side, so that trick doesn't work. But I can't help but at least try. So here's where we're going to do a bit more comparing between a few of my favorite brush pens. You might recognize some of these, but if not, let me give you a quick rundown. First on the left, I have the green Faber-Castell calligraphy brush pen. The next one over is the pink one, and that's the mild liner brush pen. The next one over is the dark blue Zig Brushable. And the next one over from that is a blue Sharpie stained brush pen. And the next one over from that is a black Marvi Uchida color in brush marker. And then lastly, we have the Tombow Dual Brush Pen. So in comparison, if we're talking about the size of the brush pen tip, it's probably going to be the closest to the Tombow Dual Brush Pen. They're not identical. I think it's a bit bigger than the Tombow, but it's probably the closest in size in my opinion. I'd say the second closest is probably the Zig Brushable, and if you've been around for a while, you know that I love a good Zig Brushable, so this does seem like a good sign to me. So as you can see, I'm just showing you some basic strokes using each of these brush pens so that you can compare for yourself which look you prefer. So after trying them, I almost feel like the Mild Liner has the most similar look. Even though the brush tip wasn't the closest in size, I wanted to test out how much they feel similar when writing, and for some reason, I'm feeling like the Faber-Castell just feels nice and firm, or maybe crisp is the right word, in comparison with the Mild Liner. So you're gonna see me just testing these out and putting a lot of pressure on them and just trying to see what I think. With the Colorin and the Sharpie stained here, I'm pushing really hard to compare. The Colorin just feels really flexible and kind of flops over, which I do love in certain types of lettering. The Sharpie stain doesn't get quite as thick when I push really hard, and when I push really hard with the Tombow, it still does feel pretty firm. 
And the Zig Brushable does feel softer when I push it really hard, but I'm thinking this also might be a bit older of a pen. And since I love my Zig Brushables, I tend to use them a lot, so it's hard to tell if it's super new or not, but I am thinking this one might be a little bit older. After all of this, I was just really trying to figure out how to describe the feel of it. And when I do this, when I'm filming, sometimes I talk to myself on the camera and like give myself notes to remember for my voiceover. And with this one, I was just really struggling to describe it. And at the end, just kind of found myself still saying that it feels crisp. So it's obviously flexible as it's making thick downstrokes, but I just keep wanting to call it crisp. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. But that does feel like such a magical thing when you have a flexible but crisp brush pen. So it did get me wondering if the reason for the crispness was because this brush pen hadn't been used very much. So I decided to just try and letter a whole page to see if I could soften it a bit more. I know this isn't like the perfect equivalent of me using a pen over a long period of time, but I do hope it helps a bit. For this one, I'm using a 9 by 12 piece of Kansan marker paper, so it's a pretty big piece of paper, and I'm going to just try to letter all over it and see how it goes. I know I keep saying the word crisp, but I feel like the lettering does look pretty crisp. Even when I look back at the lettering that I was able to create with this, I really do like how this brush pen looks. I think it's a great size, and I do think this will be one that I grab for often. So once I was done, I thought I'd test out the one that I just used versus the one that has had maybe a little bit less use. Regardless of the comparison of how they feel, I think the orange one still looks really good even after all that lettering. But in comparison, the orange does feel softer and a bit less crisp. However, I'm still really happy with the look that I'm getting with both of these brush pens. And I know that some of you guys prefer a softer brush pen, so that may be something to consider if at first these feel a little bit too firm for you. And finally, we have some color swatches. I am really curious to hear what you think about these brush pens, like if you've tried them or are you curious about trying them. The colors appear to be super vibrant, and I do love that, but I do want to point out again I'm using marker paper, which I think helps your colors to look a bit more vibrant. So if they look a little bit different for you, just keep that in mind. I highly recommend either using a really smooth copy paper or a marker paper. I have a whole page on my website about paper, so if you're interested in that, you can go to howtohandletter.com slash paper. But I just wanted to point that out in case you have tried these and yours don't look quite as vibrant. It could be the paper that I'm using. So if you do love hand lettering and you want to grab my free practice worksheets, I have put them all in one spot on my website, and that is the resource library on my website. It's completely free, so if you are interested in printing out some worksheets and getting started there, make sure to check that out. I will link it below, but you can also find it at howtohandletter.com slash resource library. I think that the February worksheets would probably work really well with these, as well as the drills worksheets, but I am frequently adding to the resource library, so make sure that you keep checking back there to see what new worksheets you can find. I will also link those pen reviews below if you'd like to see more brush pen reviews, and I will see you over in my next video.